One day this just pops up and starts swelling. So. We thought it was weird that it was bulging and it was the left eye, the same eye that has always been swollen. Then when they told us that the risk was him going blind, it's scary. That hits you hard, really. When he doesn't even want to... When your son cries, when he looks in the mirror. Hey Connor. Hey, can I take a look at your eyes? I'm gonna um, just turn his cap around for just yes. a second, if that's okay. So I can take a look at your pretty eyes. It is bright, isn't it? So Connor had presented uh, from an outside place uh, in Wichita with a big retroorbital lymphatic malformation. And it's a congenital thing. And he had presented in a situation where it had gotten some blood into it and become very enlarged and was basically pushing his left eyeball outside. You can lose the eye completely or lose the vision completely. So the other thing in the eyeball or anything really head and neck, there's so much important anatomy in those areas. So we have to be very cautious to, to not puncture any structures that we don't intend to. So again, that's where the imaging piece is absolutely essential they deal with this stuff all the time but just not behind the eye behind the eye is what makes it so so rare I think they've said they've dealt, dealt with like maybe one or two and today even I hadn't seen him in a couple weeks he looks even better than he did last time so we're really encouraged so we're gonna get a really good look on an MRI today and hopefully we can uh, use that to intervene on and get him some more some more uh, progress what do you think should we cruise back yeah. <laughs> so right in here, this area here is all abnormal. That's the lymphatic malformation. You can also see some components over here and a little bit out here laterally and then even up here on top above the eye. And again, that's what's accounting for some of that eye being pushed inferior and also out. What we found on that MRI is some residual areas. The areas that we treated actually look really good. But there's a couple small residual areas kind of on the inside of the eye and a little bit above. So we're going to try to work on those today and hopefully get that eye even in a better position to get recessed back into a normal anatomic location. With ultrasound and x-ray, you can see us guiding those needles into those very small areas right around his actual eyeball. Um, and we were able to suck some of that fluid out, which in this time did not have a lot of blood, which is really good for him because that means hopefully it won't reaccumulate the blood. And then we were able to deliver that medicine really into some tight spaces. Again, you can kind of see where we were working in there above and medial to that eye into some really difficult spots. He was back to running around last night, ate dinner, and he's back to his normal self. Full of energy. It's a relief that even from this morning, the swelling has been has even gone down, and um, it's not over yet. But as far as you know, his eye protruding and oh, it's yeah, it's a big relief. That's kind of one of my favorite things about IR is that we get to make a big difference in these kids. And in Connor's case, I mean, knowing where he started, having seen him at the first point, to see to see how far he's come now is just incredibly gratifying. To be able to partner with them and kind of walk with them through that and, and offer our expertise that we have as an institution is pretty awesome. This kind of thing is like a real, kind of the pinnacle of what we have to offer. That's what makes most of us want to come to work. I mean, you know, it's a great job. It, it's nice to know that we have a good partner if anything happens. We have multiple people we can get in contact with and to reassure us that we're going down the right path is a big relief. I'm coming home.